Hey guys, it's your girl Uche, your favorite evil voyager, and welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry that I took so long in making my next video, but I promise I will try to make them as frequent as possible. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a topic that is very near and dear to me ever since I've been in Mexico, and that is Afro-Mexicans. Today, specifically, we're going to be talking about Gaspar Yanga. If you don't know who it is, make sure to stick to the end because you will have as much information as possible. Without further ado, let's get right to it. Little is known about Gaspar Yanga, one of the first liberators of African captives in the Americas. He organized and executed the first successful revolt that lasted for over 30 years. 30 years, guys. That was groundbreaking at the time, so I'm gonna let that sink in, okay? It lasted for over 30 years before being discovered and dismantled. This took place in the colony in New Spain, now current Mexico. I've been in Mexico for about three months now, and within that period, I've learned much about Afro-Mexicans. So a little backstory here. A few weeks ago, my boyfriend and I went to the town called Chacalacas, Veracruz. It's quite spectacular, it's mostly known for its sand dunes. Honestly guys, if you haven't been there, I mean, the video speaks for itself. It's quite phenomenal, so I highly recommend it. All right, moving on. I knew Veracruz was home to a community of Afro-Mexicans, but I honestly didn't know where they resided. So while in Chacalacas, I researched and discovered the town of Yanga. It's actually located in the southern region of Veracruz, about one hour drive of Cordoba. So after a few fun and exciting days, you already guessed, we decided to head over to Yaga. So while my insatiable interest for Afro-Mexicans led me on this journey in hopes of finding and connecting with them directly myself, I would soon come to realize that, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there were hardly any Afro-Mexicans that lived there. I don't even think there were any. Honestly, like, at least not when I was there. Instead, when we arrived, I was greeted with a little bit of confusion and curiosity, pretty much, amongst the faces of the local mestizos who predominantly make up the town. I found a group of amicable youth. They seem quite cheerful and fun, and honestly, like, they look kind of happy to see me. Well, I mean, maybe they weren't happy to see me, they didn't even know who I was, <laughs> but they were really nice at least, you know? So when I saw them, I felt compelled to ask them, where were the Afro-Mexican residents? And then they told me that yeah, like I was right. They told me there was none. Immediately after I asked them what they knew about Gaspar Yanga and how he's influenced and shaped their lives. Guys, you're not ready for this, I swear. To my surprise, they didn't know who Gaspar Yanga was. Even though his statue stood tall and proud, like literally making up the focal point in the Zocalo. I just wanna let you guys know that Afro-Mexicans are actually celebrated in the town of Yaga during an annual festival. Also, I remember going into one of the cafes and I saw African art pieces, you know, kind of scattered around the cafe. So it just goes to show that even though apparently the youths don't know much about, don't know anything about Yanga, uh, the town as a whole still is connected some way, in some ways to the African heritage. So moments later, honest to God, I'm not even lying, after my encounter with the youths, I literally saw someone making something that appeared to be a vlog. And I was just like, right in front of Gaspar Yanga's statue, I kid you not. So it looked like he was searching for the same thing I was searching. So I was just like, what are the odds? That's like a planet-sized synchronicity right there. So let's take a moment and digest this spontaneous interaction, guys. So I came to Yanga for this very reason. And I just met Marco here while walking through the streets and coincidentally, he, you can see his camera behind. Uh, he also came for the same reason as well, to get more information, to spread the knowledge about what Yanga did, enlighten people more about his fight for freedom and how he liberated the African slaves from slavery. So you can go ahead and, um, you know, say more about what you're Sure. Hi. <laughs> Uh, it was a great coincidence that we were both here for the same reason. I came here because I am a YouTuber and I wanted to be in the very place where Yanga did uh, something amazing. And unfortunately, 
something that, that very little people know about. He, he uh, founded uh, a place, a town, a society with free African people. We're talking about uh, the 17th century. That's awesome. That's great. And we all should know about him much more. Yes. Is there any last thing you want to tell the viewers or anything? Uh, just great to know you and please uh, read more about Yanga. Yes, know your history guys, yeah, it's very important. Course. Marco, like myself, was curious to learn about Gaspar Yanga because unfortunately, and I say this with an emphasis, like really, unfortunately, his history is not widely spoken about in the educational curriculums in the Americas. Like it's just not, it's, it's not talked about. And that's probably why the youths didn't even know who Gaspar Yanga was or didn't even feel enticed to some degree to go and check out his statue because it's just not something that they learn in school. I continued my journey in Yanga shortly after meeting Marco and stumbled upon yet another statue of Gaspar Yanga. Like this one was even more jaw dropping and much larger than the previous one. It was so huge, guys, and it had a detailed inscription on it that I still could not, for the life of me, understand how those youths I met earlier didn't know who Gaspar Yanga was. <sighs> but I digress. Standing in the presence of the monuments, I felt Nyanga's spirit and energy and was immediately transported back in time. And although it was nothing more than an iron carving, it displayed an agile Yanga holding a sword and a broken chain, a symbol of victory over violence. Gaspar Yanga, who was originally known as Nyanga, was hypothesized to be a member of the royal family, more specifically, a prince amongst the brand people of Gabon. Unfortunately, not much else is known about his early life. However, history tells us that he was captured into slavery in the Nuestra Señora de la Concepción, a sugarcane plantation where he would labor for many years before leading a rebellion in the year 1570. This rebellion evolved into a palenque, which were pretty much autonomous communities of escaped slaves, AKA maroons. It lasted for about 30 years before being discovered. Okay, so contrary to the dominant narrative, Nyanga's maroon did not raid the Spanish caravan for the duration of the 30 years. Although the raiding did play an a somewhat important role in sustaining his palenque. Patrick J. Carroll states in his book, Blacks in Colonial Veracruz, that the rating ceased once the free men started marrying off and having children because their priorities shifted. At some point, the Spaniards invaded Nyanga's palenque and there were significant losses of lives. It was an ongoing battle for many years. Yanga eventually requested a term uh, to the Spanish authorities and he asked that his people, his Palenque, be, auto be autonomous and left alone. In return, he would make sure that there were no new slaves that would come into his Palenque and if there were any, he would return them to the Spanish authorities. He also added that he would aid the Spanish authorities on the battlefield. Unfortunately, his terms were not met right off the bat, but after many, many years, I think it was about nine years of ongoing back and forth, his term was finally um, accepted by the Spanish authorities in the year 1618. And shortly after, the free town of San Lorenzo de los Negros was finally created. So later in the 20th century, San Lorenzo de los Negros would be renamed Yanga to commemorate the founder, Gaspar Yanga himself. So a little fun bonus fact. Gaspar Yanga inspired the pop culture video of D Smoke and Snoop Dogg that was created in April 2020. It's actually named Gaspar Yanga. In the video, D Smoke is depicted as Yanga of his community, where he refuses drug dealers into his hood. A parallel is drawn here as the drug dealers who are pretty much synonymous with European slave owners. Mm -hmm. Yep. Have a primary goal of keeping D Smoke's people enslaved. Thanks, D Smoke and Snoop Dogg, for continuing on the legacy of Gaspar Yanga through pop culture. And this is the kind of thing that I love. You know, we got to be talking about 
We have to be talking about our ancestors. We have to keep their, their spirit alive. And there are many ways that we can do that. We can engage in discourses. We can educate our children. We can, you know, show them through pop culture and different media outlets. So I applaud that kind of lyrical, artistic work. Thank you guys. <laughs> Africans contributed greatly in the construction of Mesoamerica. They built roads, bridges, train tracks, you name it, in major cities and in different towns. And today, we continue to reap the benefits of their enslavement. Gaspar Yanga was not only one of our many ancestors who built the new world, but was a liberator, being one of the first of the time. His name should be written all over history books and in educational curriculums. He should be celebrated for the hero that he was. And like I said, we can start this by engaging in discourses that are centered around him and the rest of our ancestors. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a comment below, like, share, and subscribe. I especially want, if you know anything about Gaspar Yanga that I did not mention and you would like to share, please do add that in the comment down below. Oh, and one more thing. I'm gonna make this a three-part series because Afro-Mexicans are my brothers and sisters. So, you know, this is a topic, again, is very near and dear to me. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.